Sierpinski Triangle. Take three identical equilateral triangles and join them at the vertices so that they form another equilateral triangle in the middle. Then shrink this shape down by a factor of one half. Take three identical copies of it and join them in a similar way. If you do this process over and over again, the shape you end up approaching is called the Sierpinski Triangle, named after Polish mathematician Wacław Sierpinski. The Sierpinski Triangle is an example of a fractal, which is essentially a shape that has infinite detail. No matter how far you zoom in, it never smooths out. In particular, the Sierpinski Triangle is a self-similar fractal. It is composed of three smaller copies of itself. The study of fractals also gives rise to the idea of fractal dimension. A line segment is considered one-dimensional, a square is considered two-dimensional, and a cube is considered three-dimensional. If you scale up the dimensions of each of these by a factor of two, then the line segment's length is scaled by two to the first power, or two. The square's area is scaled by two squared, or four, and the cube's volume is scaled by 2 cubed, or 8. In each case, the exponent is equal to the dimensionality of the object. If you scale up the dimensions of the Sierpinski triangle by a factor of 2, it becomes 3 times as large. As a result, its dimensionality d can be found by solving for d in the equation 2 to the power of d equals 3. This equation can be solved with logarithms. Taking the logarithm base 2 of both sides, we see that d equals log base 2 of 3, which is about 1.585. In this sense, the Sierpinski triangle is approximately 1.585 dimensional. This is called its Hausdorff dimension, named after German mathematician Felix Hausdorff. Tesseract. The tesseract is the four-dimensional analog of the cube. Just as a line segment is formed by connecting two points, a square by connecting four line segments, and a cube by connecting six squares, a tesseract is formed by connecting eight cubes. These eight cubes are called the facets of the tesseract. For each dimension n, the analog of the cube is known as the n-dimensional hypercube. Obviously, four-dimensional shapes are difficult to visualize in a world with only three dimensions of space. However, one option is to look at its 3D projection. Just as the 2D projection of a 3D object can be thought of as its 2D shadow, the 3D projection of a 4D object can be thought of as its 3D shadow. Just like the cube has a volume and a surface area, the Tesseract has a 4D hypervolume and a surface volume. For a side length s, the length of a line segment is s, the area of a square is s squared, and the volume of a cube is s cubed. Accordingly, the hypervolume of a tesseract is s to the fourth power. The surface area of a cube is obtained by adding together the areas of its six square facets, yielding 6s squared. Likewise, the surface volume of a tesseract is obtained by adding together the volumes of its eight cubic facets, yielding 8s cubed. Klein bottle. Let's start with a Mobius strip, named after German mathematician August Ferdinand Mobius. This is a standard object that you could make at home. Just take a paper strip, give one end a half twist, and attach the ends together. This results in a piece of paper with just one side. The Mobius strip is something called a non-orientable surface, meaning that clockwise and counterclockwise rotation cannot be distinguished within it. If you imagine yourself traveling along the length of the Mobius strip, upon returning to your starting point, you would find yourself upside down from your starting orientation. Of course, this supposes that you're a 3D object traveling on top of the Mobius Strip. But if you're actually a 2D object living within the Mobius Strip, then traveling along it back to your starting position would cause you to become your mirror image. Accordingly, rotations that once looked clockwise would now look counterclockwise, so an orientation cannot be consistently defined for this surface. The Klein bottle, named after German mathematician Felix Christian Klein, is another example of a non-orientable surface. However, it has no boundary, meaning there are no points where the surface abruptly stops. It does not intersect itself, though it often seems to in visualizations due to the limitations of 3D space. In 4D space, it is easily constructed from the Mobius strip. Just take two copies of the Mobius strip and glue their edges together. or in the words of Austrian-Canadian mathematician Leo Moser, a mathematician named Klein thought the Mobius band was divine, 
said he, if you glue the edges of two, you'll get a weird bottle like mine. Mandelbrot Set The Mandelbrot Set, named after French-American mathematician Benoit B. Mandelbrot, arises in the study of complex numbers. We begin by picking some number c in the complex plane. Using c, we will define a complex function, called f sub c, with the equation f sub c of z equals z squared plus c. Basically, this function takes in a number, multiplies it by itself, adds c, and spits out the result. Start by evaluating this function at z equals zero. For instance, if you chose c equals one, then we have f sub one of zero equals zero squared plus one equals one. Then take the result and plug it back into the same function. Here, that would give you f sub one of one equals one squared plus one equals two. Keep doing this over and over again. Depending on the value you chose for c, the resulting sequence of numbers may stay bounded in absolute value, or it may diverge toward infinity. In our c equals one case, it diverges, since the sequence goes 0, 1, 2, 5, 26, and so on. The Mandelbrot set is the set of all possible values of c you could choose that result in a bounded sequence. As we saw, the number 1 is therefore not an element of the Mandelbrot set, but the number negative 1 is, since that produces the bounded sequence 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, etc. The Mandelbrot set is contained entirely within the disk of radius 2, centered at the origin, and its boundary has Hausdorff dimension 2. If you draw the Mandelbrot set in the complex plane, you get a very intricate shape. Infinitely intricate, in fact, making it a fractal. Zooming in, we see that it is a self-similar fractal at certain points, and a variety of other patterns can be found. Due to its intricacy, the Mandelbrot set has been cited as an example of mathematical beauty, particularly how complex patterns can arise from simple definitions. Weierstrass function. In calculus, you may know about the concept of a differentiable function. If you take the graph of a function and zoom in at a certain point, it may straighten out, looking more and more like a line. If it does, then the line being approximated is called the tangent line. If this line is not vertical, then the function is differentiable at that point, and the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. In order for a function to be differentiable at a point, it must be continuous there, meaning you can draw its graph without picking up your pencil. Also, it cannot bend sharply there. For example, the absolute value function is not differentiable at zero. No matter how far you zoom in on its graph at x equals zero, it never straightens out. It is easy to imagine a continuous function that is non-differentiable at a finite or even countably infinite amount of points, since that just means that graph has a sharp bend there. However, it is much harder to imagine a continuous function that's infinitely jagged and doesn't smoothen out anywhere. Thus, for a long time, mathematicians assumed that there was no function that is continuous everywhere and differentiable nowhere. The Weierstrass function is a function that is continuous everywhere and differentiable nowhere. It was discovered by German mathematician Karl Weierstrass and first published in 1872. Weierstrass defined it using an infinite sum called a Fourier series. Here, a must be strictly between 0 and 1, b must be a positive odd integer, and a times b must be greater than 1 plus 3 over 2 pi. Whatever values you pick for a and b that follow these rules, you will get the exact same resulting function. The graph of the Weierstrass function is a self-similar fractal curve. However, such curves were hard to visualize back then. The existence of the Weierstrass function destroyed several proofs that relied on continuous functions being differentiable almost everywhere, so it was denounced by mathematicians. Later on, mathematicians apparently came to the realization that counterintuitive facts can be true, and the Weierstrass function is widely accepted today. Seifert surface. Take a long piece of rope and arrange it into whatever form you like. Then glue together the two dangling ends. Mathematically, the resulting object is known as a knot. If you can stretch and squish one knot into another knot without using self-intersections, then the two knots are the same. If you take a combination of one or more knots, 
where these knots may or may not be separable, you get an object called a link. Knots and links are important objects of study in the mathematical field of knot theory. The simplest knot is the unknot, which is basically just a loop of rope without anything being tied. The next simplest knot is the trefoil knot, which can be created by connecting the ends of an overhand knot. As for links, an unlink is any finite collection of circles that aren't connected together at all. The Hopf link, named after German mathematician Franz Hopf, consists of two circles linked together, and the Borromean rings, named after the aristocratic Borromeo family, are three linked circles that fall apart if one is destroyed. A Seifert surface, named after German mathematician Herbert Seifert, is an orientable surface with a boundary of a knot or link. The simplest example is a disk, which is a surface whose boundary is a circle, which is just an unknot. Noting the requirement of orientability in the definition, the Mobius strip is not a Seifert surface, even though its boundary is an unknot. A Seifert surface formed by a Hopf link may be resemblant of a Mobius strip, but it is actually topologically equivalent to an annulus, the plane region bounded by two concentric circles, and is thus orientable. Finally, a Seifert surface formed by the Borromean rings looks like this.